This video is sponsored by Aura. Shaggy, is that you? Man, Shaggy's gone, man. Excellent point. When it comes to hood films, if it ain't focusing on the main key hood aspects like gangs, crime, or baby mama drama, well, you became a slut with my vato. then for the most part, that particular movie isn't gonna be a good film. Street hood superhero movie, cringe. Oh shit, what is that? <laughs> hood hot cheetah entrepreneurship mm -hmm. film, corny as hell. Rico. Ha, figures, beans for dirty. <laughs> But how well does a hood serial slayer mystery horror film hold up? Does it break the curse of being a bad hood film? Or is it just another scaringly bad attempt? Also, why the hell is this film so damn hard to find? Is it too scary to even exist and stored away for our own safety? Well, let's turn off the lights and get into it. Hey old body from the future here and sorry if my voice changes throughout the video review and I mess up and, and slur some words, I was sick as hell and coughing my lungs out but Sabasuke I had to push through for you guys and also the only place I could honestly find this video was through an upload on YouTube and I tried contacting the uploader to get the original footage without the watermarks but that was to no avail so I'll leave a link to the original upload if you guys want to check out, check out the film. Now for reals so let's get into it. The film starts off in an interrogation room with a detective questioning one of the main characters, Joey, because he was recently shot at with his homie while they were alone with each other at night drinking 40s. And sabes que? That's kind of sus, Holmes. Pero I think that might be his brother. Yeah, that's it, little bro. <laughs> but you know what? That's still kind of sus. The other fool who turns out to be Joey's brother, Shaggy, gets got. No! and Joey takes a bullet to the head. And right after that, the intro for the movie starts. And you know what? The animation in the film, it high key goes kind of hard. Once the intro credits end, some girl finds a random dead body and we transition to the same detective from the beginning, Detective Graham. And she goes into the captain's office, also played by Edward James Olmos. She's a new transfer and she's a good cop, but she's also a rat. You testified against your training officer. You're a rat. You scare people, Graham. You shouldn't touch it because it's a street rat. How you doing, bro? <laughs> You're a rat. So the captain pairs her up with Tom Sizemore's character, Detective Cunningham. And he's a troubled cop who is now a drunk ass fool. Watch this. I'm going to sober up right now. Hey, how are you, Captain? Nice to see you. What's going on? <laughs> and I got to say, some of the cuts in this film are choppy as hell. Let's go. Nah, bullshit. <laughs> we switch back to Joey at his mom's house and damn, a grown ass Mexican still living in his elderly mother's house. This movie is authentic as hell. Joey has head trauma and amnesia, so he's having trouble remembering his friends, family, and his brother who just passed. Ah, up yet? Shaggy? Huh? Shaggy, is that you? Man, Shaggy's gone, man. <laughs> And A is Hector from the Hectorverse. And hold up, he ain't playing a character named Hector, but instead he's Dusty? And I believe wholeheartedly, this is why the film doesn't exist. Because of Dusty's experience, it puts the entire Hectorverse in danger and its existence at stake. Anyways, Joey thinks that Dusty is Shaggy, but Shaggy is the one who got got at the beginning. Yeah, that's it, little bro. <laughs> Although Joe does keep forgetting that. Now the detectives are at a crime scene. Detective Graham is like an empath, so she's able to put herself in the killer's footsteps and recreate the crime scene and all. And while doing that, she finds out that this is the homie who stole her online identity, so she blasts them. And this could also happen to you, but luckily this video is sponsored by Aura. Want to know something really scary? Ah, yeah. ah come on, fool. How about this? The fact that people who are mostly active on social media are the ones to most likely have their identity details stolen. And it's not even hard to take it from you. For reals. If you've ever clicked or participated in any of these clickbaity posts, like, find your cholo rapper name, pick the month you were born in and the date, or how about the old reliable, type Halloween and the year you were born in the gift bar. And that's your costume this year. Well, it turns out your costume was an identity theft victim. If so, then scaringly enough, there's scammers that already have some of your identity info. Fuck! 
but worry not because you can easily click my special link or QR code and try Aura completely free for 14 days. In order to have the dark web scanned and scrubbed from all your information by Aura to prevent any more of your passwords, identity, money, and private info from getting ganked. What's that you say? You already forgot your passwords? Then that's cool too, foo, because Aura also manages your passwords, gives you a VPN, parental controls, data security, and so much more. Don't wait to get hacked and to say, damn, the old barrio was right. Go ahead and click my special link or QR code to get Aura completely free for 14 days. So thank you, Aura, for sponsoring this video. Switch back to Dusty and Joey, and they are chilling with the homies. And bro, why does all of these characters have that generic bald cholo goatee phenotype? And I think they're from the 305 gang because. What's Mr. 305, Mr. Worldwide, back here again. I just came to remind y'all. Que se culo vota caca. Deadass, let's play a game where you take a shot every time a bald cholo phenotype is introduced. Simultaneously, Detective Cunningham and Detective Graham are having that optimistic slash pessimistic debate and the only problem with this debate is that cunningham has his mouth full of food and i can't understand shit well, i'm bleeding heart liberals huh so greenville i'll paradise got my goddamn cop look around you vegas this is in beverly hills man it's the mic he's the only one that ever made sense to me now we're with the new head of shaggy's old gang trigger and some more bald cholo phenotypes and you know what don't don't play that take a shot game i don't want y'all to get poisoned for reals look how many bald cholos there are also joey tells dusty that he thinks that shaggy had something going on with triggers hyena shaggy and vanessa had something going on what are you talking about man i thought vanessa was triggers girl the trigger's fucking psycho, you understand that? Don't you know that food don't wipe the food off his lips? He's crazy, Holmes. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? Back at Cunningham's pad and the two detectives are using Chinese food to try and solve Shaggy's murder. <gasps> Fat ass lip smacks and all. Not a 50 divide, right? Excellent point. It's just, it's just, uh, it's That's what a good video review sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're at a gang meetup where more bald cholo phenotypes are all puffing their chests, beefing, sweaty forehead and all. And the point of this meetup was to speculate and hypothesize on who was the one who is dusting all the homies and Shaggy. And A is Emilio Riviera. Trigger's also there and he's pressing Dusty, although he forgets his lines mid-shot. So bitch, mother also, real question, is it me or does Joey look like a brown Derek Vineyard from American History X? Hold up, is it me or does Trigger also look like a brown Derek Vineyard? Hold up, is it me or is Derek Vineyard the originator of the bald cholo phenotype? Even though he's a white supremacist? Deadass, there's too many coincidences. Let me know what y'all think. Could Derek be the murderer? Back on track and the crew leaves to do some gang stuff while Joey visits Trigger's girl, trying to ask about her and his brother's situation. But she tells on how Trigger was acting all sus the night that Shaggy got got. Anything about what we're gonna do tonight, I will take your life. Are you spying on daddy? You better not be. And she also alludes to other stuff. But this is interrupted by gunfire as some fools try to pull up on Dusty. Dusty is able to dust him off, but also gets wounded in the arm by birdshot. And Joey attends to his wounds, but then he starts having flashbacks and passes out. Hey. All the while, Trigger and his crew dust the rival gang, and Trigger stupidly leaves his fingerprints in the magazine all over the crime scene because he's lost in the cholo sauce. Later at night, the Cholo Reaper strikes again and murders two of Trigger's and Dusty's crew members. And the detective is an empath, so she's able to follow the scene in her dreams. And the next morning, she's at the crime scene and she concludes that... There's two. One kills, the other one stands guard. Now we're back with the two brothers again, and it turns out that Joey passed out for the entire night and they speculate more on their brother's death. I'm trying to tell you that I think Trigger killed Shaggy because of Vanessa. The two detectives questions the two brothers and later Joey can recall what time he passed out and how long he's been gone for. Meanwhile, Detective Graham is on to something, but 
she's facing workplace harassment. Better smarten up, little girl. It doesn't pay to play teacher's pet when you're out on the street. She goes to find Cunningham and he's completely wasted and turns out that Dusty was Cunningham's old snitch. But he let Dusty take some fall for some violent charges or something like that and that Dusty might be the Cholo Reaper getting revenge on all the sick ass foos who wronged him in the past. Later, Joey does some random ass sketchy stuff with bullets from Trigger's gun that was given to him by Trigger's girl. And oh, turns out that Trigger's girl and Joey had a thing going on he couldn't remember because of his head wound and amnesia being a side effect. Joey gives the bullets he fired from Trigger's gun to Detective Graham to cross-examine. Later, Cunningham goes into the captain's office and really doesn't give a shit. Insubordination, disorderly conduct. I got some discouraging words for you, boss, okay? You heard me. Give me your bet. Um, no. <laughs> Turns out Cunningham changes his mind, though, and he does give a shit. Best detective you got, goddammit. Come on. Hey, come on, stop. Hey, look. look. Get your hand off my penis! He tries to beg for his job back, though. It's a pretty captivating scene for show. Ultimately, though, the captain almost fires Cunningham but it gives him his badge back. And Graham gets mad, and it's that whole American Me, Julie speech scene, side stare and all. Just look at this shit, it's the same shot. Joey calls Detective Graham, and the results for the spent shell casings and bullets from Trigger's gun don't match the murder weapon. And the two speculate some more. In the night, the detective uses her empath powers, then in the morning, two more people get slayed by the Cholo Reaper, and the detectives are on the scene, and she knows who the Reaper is. Who did it? You wanna know who did it? Who? Trigger. Better not be. The block is hot and in fear of the Reaper, and Joey accuses Trigger of being the one who murdered his brother Shaggy and of being the Cholo Reaper. It was Trigger, homie. Oh, hell no. It was Trigger, dog. He's taking out his own homeboys. However, Trigger's right behind him and hears this, to which he presses Joey. You. That motherfucker's... He, you killed my fucking brother. That motherfucker back there is not real. Joey goes insane and then starts blasting out of nowhere. Whoa, shit. Trigger gets the best of him though and lets Joey know that it ain't him and he also doesn't mind being cut by him because he's got other hyenas on the side. You killed my brother, dad! Why would I do that, Dreamer? Player, play yourself in season homes. I don't give a shit what you think she's the only ruka I got, huh? Cunningham randomly shows up and tells Joey to leave while he deals with Trigger. And they're both crazy and laugh over Cunningham's special edition Jordans. What type of those, dog? <laughs> but What's so funny? Shaky ass boots, porky pig. That's funny. That's funny. You mean my spit kickers here, right? Ow. But he really shouldn't have laughed at his boots. You shouldn't have laughed at my boots. Told you. Joey is starting to go more and more insane and remember stuff. So he half heartedly admits to the cholo slings and asks Detective Graham to meet him at the garage where all these cholo slings were happening. Upon getting there, Joey remembers everything and he gets even more insane, turning into a Kyle wall punches and all. At the same time, Dusty gets there, and he's the mastermind who planned it all out, so Dusty gives that devious cholo speech. I'm evil, vato. Meanwhile, Detective Graham is eavesdropping. In addition, Detective Cunningham is also eavesdropping on Detective Graham eavesdropping on Dusty and Joey, so now it's shootout time. Urgh, I'm so angry. Joey tries to end his brother Dusty because he thought it was him who murdered their own brother Shaggy, but it turns out it was actually Detective Cunningham who killed Shaggy. Oh, and before I forget to mention, both brothers are dead at the hands of Cunningham to protect this secret. So why does Cunningham kill Shaggy? Who knows? I'm pretty sure even the film doesn't know. And let me do you a favor and clear up some stuff. Detective Cunningham was the one who killed Shaggy, but why? I don't know. Joey and Dusty were both the Cholo Slayers and Dusty used Joey to kill all the other homies because they were disrespecting him while he was gone and now he wants to be on top. And the person who shot Dusty while Joey was talking to Trigger's girl was... I still don't know, man. I'm pretty sure the movie doesn't even know. It's just like I repeated. 
Now grandma's the only witness to this, so the next day she lets all the other cholos know that Cunningham was the one who wasted Shaggy, and Dusty, and Joey. So they show up to his house. Huh? I said, what's up? Wait, 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 wait. That's the way I do things, I said. Hey, Jesse, uh, on the face, okay? Give me that, huh? Uh, no! And the movie ends at that. The ending still leaves a lot of unanswered stuff though. I'm gonna repeat myself again, but like, why did Cunningham waste Shaggy? Is he a serial killer? Also, does the crew at the end know that Joey and Dusty were the ones where the Cholo Slayer slaying all their old homies? And why the hell is the film so damn hard to find? For real, I can't find it anywhere. I tried looking for it on Amazon, Netflix, Hulu. This shit almost don't exist, bro. Why the hell is this movie named Splinter? Is Derek Vineyard a bald goatee Cholo phenotype? Overall, Splinter was an eye film. It's not good. It just feels like another generic 2000s low budget crime movie film it ain't that scary and you pretty much know that the brothers are the killers within like the first 30 minutes of the film it's obvious as hell however if you do want to see a more morbid type of cholo movie then i would highly recommend 187 to which i did a review and if you want to see a more disturbing cholo movie type with a scary sick ass who then go ahead and check out harsh times or my review on it five out of ten or less <laughs> Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And thank you all for sponsoring the video. Until next time, later.